While the art for this light novel appears cutesy, you should not judge a book by its cover. A Certain Dark Side's Item is the latest spin-off in the ever-expanding Toaru franchise, and it was an absolute blast from start to finish. Even I did not expect it to be this good. Also, don't worry, this video will not have any major spoilers, so if you haven't checked out this novel yet, this might inspire you. The story takes place one year before the start of both A Certain Magical Index and A Certain Scientific Railgun, focusing on a girl group that are way more savage than they look, known as as item who dwell in Academy City's criminal underground known as the Dark Side, doing odd jobs for the higher ups, which mainly involves destroying and killing. Those of you who saw the art and thought, haha, maybe this is going to be a more moe and light hearted series involving the item girls. You're wrong. The girls, especially Mugano, who can atomize her victims with her meltdown of beams, has zero chill and has no qualms about disintegrating anything in front of her. And yes, that includes anyone stupid enough to fight her. Honestly, it's refreshing as hell to have a main character in the Toaru universe that won't hesitate to kill their enemies. Even in Accelerator's own series, he spared a decent amount of his foes for no reason. I guess Kakina is the exception in Dark Matter, but that was only a few manga chapters. So this dark and gritty tone in the item spin-off is definitely one of the main positives from it, as it stays true to what we can expect from the girls, while giving us more time with these characters so they can shine. But back to the art, I don't think the art is bad per se, although I think the drawings overall could have been much cooler as none of them really stand out to me. Like the novel had many awesome fights and battle scenes that could have been drawn, but nearly all the illustrations are just character close-ups. You could argue that maybe the art doesn't represent the tone of the story, therefore it's not good. But maybe it's using the Madoka Magica framework of these cute girls sure are messed up or get messed up. While the novel was advertised as an origin story for the item girls, that's kind of misleading as it doesn't really show you how item were first formed. Instead, it does tell a story of how the current version of the group we all know and love from Index and Railgun came to be. Without giving too much away, the item girls are given two missions. First to attack a research lab of scientists, which happens in the prologue. Then they are instructed to attack the management behind what is known as the Colosseum. And no, it's not gladiators in ancient Rome. It's an underground fighting arena where contestants battle to the death in the hopes of winning prize money. Item are hired by a life insurance company, which helps fund the tournament, who feels like they are being taken advantage of by the Colosseum management as they are struggling to stay in business due to taking in less money from the contestants. However, nothing is as simple as it seems, as Item decide to change the rules for themselves by attacking their own contractors in the hopes of landing a huge sum of money. But by doing so, they end up in a slippery slope where things go from bad to worse, as they fight an enemy faction very similar to their own, with one of them claiming to be an extremely powerful esper. While the initial goal of Item is to hit the jackpot, things never remain quite so simple, as the plot develops with many twists and turns that surprise the audience. I was super interested with the new lord I got added with the introduction of the Colosseum, as it does feel like something that would thrive in the underworld of Academy City, with so many psychic ability users wanting to test the destructive nature of their powers for their own self gain. What I also appreciated from the plot was the moments of peace, as it wasn't just all explosions like a Michael Bay movie. The item girls really have good chemistry and bounce off each other, making the interactions between them engaging. There's a section in the novel where Mugano just goes for a jog that I thoroughly enjoyed. It may sound kinda unimportant, but when you see her being a bloodthirsty killer, to someone who struggles to wake up in the morning and has insecurities about her own body fat, which is absolute cat by the way, it makes her feel more realistic and believable as a character. There were a lot of surprises in this volume that keep you on the edge of your seat, and the pacing of this novel flowed really well. Sometimes Kamachi Kazuma's books can be quite slow or not as engaging in the first half, but this was not the case at all here, as it throws you straight into the action, and the plot progresses at a solid pace, even during the slice of life sections. There was also one point in the novel where I nearly lost my mind. I won't spoil what it is, 
but if you read it, you probably know what I'm talking about. Another aspect of the volume I enjoyed was where Item would have to conduct an investigation to find clues to decide their next move, or the infiltration mission where I was on the edge of my seat, giving us cool set pieces between the moments of chaos and providing more context about how dark side groups like Item operate during missions. Also, I'm nearly at 20k subs where I will be making a video about whether Toma has plot armor or not. So subscribe and you will get that video. Each member of Item has their moment to shine in this volume. We get extra information about their backstories, which wasn't included in the Index novel or the Railgun manga. While some members take more of a back seat at times, the girls have to work together multiple times, which is also what makes the fights excellent. Strategy and unique ability interactions are on full display, as well as no mercy at all, making them a pleasure to read. Mugano is definitely the standout member of the girls, and that's not really a surprise, and her moral compass is presented in a nuanced way, which some fans may be confused by, since Mugano isn't really known to be compassionate. But this is a prequel one year before the start of Index, so maybe things changed. There are explanations as to why she seemingly cares so much about her comrades, but won't hesitate to kill them if they dare betray her. To me, it made sense and also makes Mugano more likable, despite her controversial actions in Volume 15 of Index. As for the new characters, I have to talk about the new recruit to item known as Hanano Chobi. She is competing with Mugano for the best girl of the volume. I absolutely adored Hanano as a character. She is quite a timid person who seems very out of place in this world of violence and crime, but this is compensated by her skills to disguise herself as almost anyone, as she is an infiltration specialist. Some of the things that Kamachi does with Hanano is pure genius, like the writing was that good. There is a part where she disguises herself as a middle-aged fat Japanese man, and she has to enter an enemy base and retrieve some data. It was entertaining as hell. We also have a new group of villains, which I mentioned earlier, who all have unique character traits and different reasons as to why they are involved in the dark side. I won't say too much as I'll be heading into spoilers if I do. Don't get me wrong, they weren't the best antagonists of all time, but I'd say they were perfect for the story that Kamachi was trying to tell. The Esper power of the main villain was also really cool and had some clever applications of real physics, which I do commend Kamachi for, as it must be difficult coming up with new Esper powers in this ever-expanding franchise. The volume also had a plethora of references and obvious nods to events, which happen in Index and Railgun, and even content beyond the anime in New Testament. Some of these references are pretty subtle, and you might not even notice it, so stay sharp if you do read it. And no, you don't have to read New Testament to check out this book. As long as you've got a broad understanding of who item are, you should be good. But if you do read New Testament, it will enhance your experience if you've read at least New Testament Volume 1. The references aren't thrown in your face every second, and the story doesn't rely on them to keep you hooked, so don't worry. Honestly, for what this volume was, that being a prequel spin-off revolving around item, I can't imagine this being much better for an introductory volume. Therefore, surprisingly, I have to give it a 10 out of 10. It pretty much ticked all boxes for me. It's almost like a classic Old Testament volume of Index, keeping the plot relatively simple without the need for god-level characters with world-ending abilities or convoluted lore. A conflict on this scale feels like a breath of fresh air. It just makes me wonder, why the hell was this spin-off not made sooner? This is probably the best ongoing spin-off in the Toaru franchise right now, despite the current arcs of both Railgun and Mental Out starting to improve. I'm not saying this is better than Railgun's sister's arc or Daihasei's arc, but it's definitely a must-read, in my opinion, if you love Index and Railgun. Anyway, I really hope we get more volumes of this, as I would absolutely love to see how the plot and characters progress from here, as it will be a major downer if it doesn't get a sequel. And maybe one day we will get a spin-off for Sogita and Aihana Etsu, since they are the only two remaining level 5s without one. By the way, this Sunday at 2pm Central Standard Time, I will be doing a podcast livestream with other Toaru fans discussing all things spoilers from this novel. If you want to hear us talk about some of the mind-blowing events from this volume, there's your chance. The link will be in the description. And don't forget to turn on that bell icon to enable notifications so you don't miss when we go live. 